happens when you put three schools, three teachers and three educational experts in one programme. What happens? You'll learn how to invest time to save time. Coming up, Early Years expert Jane Dixon offers NQT Leroy ideas on how to mark a larger than average class. Um, rather than taking everybody's work, it might be that you take in one group. You can look at an element of each child's work without actually looking at the full thing the whole time. So that would hopefully save you some time. Yeah, it would, it would. And thinking skills specialist Lisa shows Helen how to facilitate an effective peer assessment idea. Across the top, the challenges have been broken down from what my weakest child in the group would be able to do. Right and then one above what we're most able. But first it's over to ICT with Nick Packard. He's come to Worth Primary in Cheshire to meet Jenny Evans, a year four teacher who wants to claw back some precious time. Having um, trained in Key Stage 1 and uh, Foundation Stage, I found that marking assessment was predominantly um, immediate feedback and took place in the classroom with the pupils. Yeah. And having now found myself in the large Key Stage 2 class, mm -hmm. um, I found that it takes up a large proportion of my time. Um, so really I'd like help with um, managing my time more efficiently, um, but still ensuring that my feedback and my assessment and my marking is efficient. To what extent do you feel that physical evidence of the learning that's taken place, that the children produce, yeah. is something that's kind of got to be done in large quantities? Obviously you get a feel for what the children are learning, but when it actually comes to, what, to, to um, the work that's in their book, mm -hmm. um, I think it does, it does give me a lot more evidence, really. My expertise, supposed expertise, is about ICT mm -hmm. in teaching and learning. Um, obviously computers are a very good way of capturing bits of evidence that are quite difficult to record in other ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've, if you've got a digital camera in your, in your classroom and you can take a photograph of yeah. something that someone is doing or has done, yes. it gives you very instant yeah. evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that could be quite a nice one to do, because yes. you, um, you could take that shot, stick it onto your laptop, and you've got that. You can yeah. tag a piece of information to it yeah. about the context and the person mm -hmm. and the date. Uh, you know, you could do that as a word template yes. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and print it out if printed evidence is something you feel you need. Yeah. But if not, then you've got it there as a, as a, as a reference. Yeah. I was going to just go on to ask you a little bit about um, how how you feed back. Do you ever kind of sit down with a piece of work? I mean, it might be like partway through a drafting exercise or something like that. Do you actually go through and kind of mark it up? I do try to, yes, mm -hmm. especially when we're writing stories um, and they're writing it in, in draft, first of all, I go sure. through it and we try and work on it together. But having 34 in the class, it's, it's, it's big, quite time consuming. Yeah, of yeah. course it is. One of the, the things that I've seen, which I think is quite a nice idea, is colour coding. Right. And I don't know if it's got a proper name, it quite possibly has, but I've just seen one person doing it and I thought this is just such a lovely idea. They basically have on the wall in the classroom an agreed list of what colours mean. Right. Um, so it might be, you know, if it's in story writing, it's uh, something about chronology or grammar or spelling or characterisation, right. whatever it is you're focusing yeah. on. And they have agreed colours. Mm -hmm. And rather than the teacher sitting down and writing on, I think you need to do such and such, mm. they just put a green highlighter over it. And the child knows, oh, I've got to think about grammar, because yeah. grammar's green. Yeah. So the feedback is not quite so laborious. Yeah. Um, but it also helps them appreciate the, the range of different mm. ideas there are mm. when you're writing a story. Yeah. So it has a kind of a, a double benefit. And I think that's a really nice it idea. Is, it is a good idea, yeah. Um, you can kind of do it on IT as well. I don't know if yeah. you've ever used track changes on Word. But if you've ever used um, a computer to draft and redraft a story. This is a lovely thing to be able to do. If you, if you want to have a look what that looks like, hit that button. And all I have to do here is say, right, I don't want that. Delete it. And there it shows what I just deleted. Brilliant. Oh, I and didn't know. I wasn't I, aware of this. If I add this in here, it shows different colour and the formatting changes that I've made. Brilliant. And you can have a look at that with the markup or this little window up here says, actually, I just want to see what the final result looks like. And it takes the changes away. So you get beginning, process, yeah. end. Excellent. And it may never happen in your class that you actually use Word for, for drafting and redrafting. But if you were to, yeah. I think that's quite a nice little, little way of um, managing the process for you. For copies of these resources and more of Nick's ideas, log on to our website at www.teachers.tv. Jane 
Helen Dixon is jam-packed full of good ideas that can apply to every teacher. Today she's come to Lower Croft Primary in Berry to help NQT Leroy Holcroft. I'm looking to uh, get some pointers and any time-saving advice you might have on homework and marking. Oh, right, um, because I believe you're um, coming here in full-time in September. I am. I am taking on Year 5 uh, as of September. Right, with a class of 36, is that right? 30, it's 35 or 36, yeah. It's the numbers that uh, do initially make it difficult. Uh, with 36, say I set 36 pieces of creative writing and having to sit down and mark all those when each child can write perhaps two sides of A4, it's, it's a whole evening's work and perhaps the best part of the next morning. OK, I mean, I think obviously there are issues around other subject areas, but perhaps thinking maybe about the creative writing, mm. might sort of just think about some sort of uh, pointers there. Yeah. Um, in terms of the um, revised framework, I mean, there's, there's more flexibility, isn't there, within that to actually, you know, use the units which are, you know, go based over two or three weeks to actually develop a substantial piece of work yeah. and not feel the need to have, you know, a relentless week in, week out completed piece of work yeah. but it's actually bite-sized pieces chunks that you know children can can manage so the first piece might be research so you might actually ask the children to just research a setting for example and then when they bring that in as you're developing over the two to three weeks the next time you know they, they bring it in and then it links straight into their their work right and then again the same with re with drafting they might hand they might do a first draft and you might decide that that's the place where you want to use peer assessment and i notice that you you, you do do that do, which do, is yeah. an excellent but it also helps you in terms of marking obviously so i think it would be worth your while investing time at the beginning of the year teaching the children some real um skills in assessment for learning when you've got that um, secure and you think the children are doing a good job, I actually think that should enable you to feel I don't have to double up now yeah. in everything. Rather than taking everybody's work, it might be that you take in one group, a small group of say six, six to eight children, um, and actually go through that in quite a detailed way. As the process moves on and you're perhaps looking at redrafting or the second, you know, moving on to the second draft, it might be that you then take a different group's work in. And so by doing that through the process, you can look at an element of each child's work without actually looking at the full um, right. the full yeah. thing the whole time so that would hopefully save you it, some time yeah, it would, it would. you know there are limited amounts of time saving advice for someone with 36 yeah. I mean you know if you were 20 task, yeah. it's, I'm sure you're doing an excellent job and um, you know you sound very positive about it mm. so <laughs> um, I wish you well with that one thank you very much <laughs> thank you for copies of these resources and more of Jane's ideas log on to our website at www.teachers.tv Our last tip of the day comes from thinking skills specialist Lisa Cook. She's helping Head of English Helen Wilson save time through effective peer assessment. Um, as Head of English we obviously have to mark um, really, really, yeah, masses. And in terms of the marking load, I'd like to be able to look at giving an emphasis to sort of targeting students. Right. Um, you know, sharpening the objectives for them and actually looking at cutting down on the sort of degree of marking that we do. So maybe putting the onus more onto the students to take responsibility for peer and self-assessment. Yeah, that's and right. looking at that kind of marking and how that all fits in together. Yeah. What works at the moment really well in your department? Um, the students self-assess reasonably well, um, but we, we have, up until recently, have mixed ability groupings right. and so the, in terms of their ability to sort of share the assessments and they might mm -hmm. be at different levels, obviously that's an issue in terms yes. of differentiation. But um, with the sets we've been able to sort of key target particular groups of students mm -hmm. to work together as, in teams. Right. Um, and do you actively teach them those self and peer assessment skills from say year seven through or is it something you pick up at GCSC? Um, we do, but obviously with English, the, the nature of English, the actual, uh, the language, you know, even though you break it down and there's help sheets and all the rest of it, that can be quite challenging for yes. them. Um, and the actual process of getting them to be more reflective can be quite difficult. So getting them to slow down in that process yeah, and so. to place the value on what you would like them to place yeah. the value on. Now, 
when I came into your classroom, I could see that you had the learning ladders, uh, you use Bloom's taxonomy, and so that's something that the children are familiar with when they're talking about their work. But I think it's ideas on how you break that down so it's more accessible. You know, as a department, we try and push um, key key words like evaluate what does that mean and unpick that and we try and have the grade boundaries at the side of yes of the actual skills that the students are trying to access to be able to identify for them how they're actually moving up right. the skills process so they're developing a language for learning as That's they progress right. through so you have yeah. a really cohesive approach to marking already yeah right so. one of the ideas i'd like to talk to you about is similar to your learning ladder but it's called a learning road the concept that works here is explanation Across the top, the challenges have been broken down from what my weakest child in the group would be able to do. Right. And then one above what we're most able. So that whatever point they access on this learning road, the aim is to move them one or two places to the right, right. not necessarily to get all the way to the top. Right. But the way that this works that I think is sometimes more useful than just having stage success criteria is it exemplifies it. Excellent. So using literacy prompts underneath, even your weakest child would be able to work with somebody who's slightly more able and take their work and say, well, I can see that they are doing this stage because I can see it here. So your next step is to try this challenge and I need to see these things taking place. And so it connects the actual objective to the language. Yes. And so they can actually marry those two together. So it's, it's Helping with yeah. the language prompts, like you've talked about, you know, being familiar with the language, but they can physically see that that's there. Now, this is on no four sheet, but it could be something that's up um, as a full road across part of a wall in a classroom. No, that'd be excellent, actually. And I think in terms of all the different sorts of learners we have, and mm -hmm. having the big picture is key to it all yes. as well. You've talked before about how marking can be onerous because mm. there's so many different levels and layers yeah. and it would be helping students to look and say right well yes there's levels and layers in the piece of work I'm doing but in this one this is the particular skill that we're focusing on so that's how it would work with year seven but when I looked at the materials that you sent for me for GCSE it was interesting the way that the exam board obviously set it out from U through to A star, but then they banned things as well. Yeah. So it might be that in a particular set, you're focusing on your A star to C group, yeah. and looking at what skills are actually going to push more into the A star group, which can be a bit elusive, mm. and being really explicit about what is the difference mm. between an A star and an A. And if it was set out so that it was broken into smaller stages of the actual cognitive part behind right, it. Right, yeah. So it's not just stage success criteria, it's what's the thinking that underpins yeah. it. And I think it's that that can be quite elusive, yes. both for the teacher and for the student, because if you have to unpick what the term evaluate mm -hmm. means and that independence of thought and the shininess yes. of what an A star actually yes. means, it's actually decoding it's really that hard. for the student. Yeah. It's breaking that down so that they can see what precisely is it that makes it that particular grade. It might not be the A star grade, it might not be that huge leap from a D to a C. And what the thinking is, the quality of the thinking yeah. is. And we can use the words like evaluate, but what does evaluate look like at a D that's so different in a C? For copies of these resources and more of Lisa's ideas, log on to our website at www.teachers.tv. My top tip is, when you're working in an ICT suite and you want the class's attention, get them to turn their monitor screens off. That way, you'll have more of their attention, you won't have to be repeating yourself, and you'll get more things done.